corrupt box B3. His knees are gonna go on a rampage again. And where the hell is Tim? And why do I hear Bond's music? Even after the Oculus agreed to fight the corrupted with the humans, it still isn't easy. There's still so much corrupted masters and some of them might not be as easy to kill. With enough help from everyone who the liquid has taken control of, the survivors might be at least a little bit successful. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are back with a special one. If things did go well yesterday, I said, when I played Corpus V2, I said that this video would come out today. Uh, this, is, this is like where shit is gonna go down, you know? This is the last version of Corrupt Box. There are a lot of songs that we had to go through. There are a lot of shit in this video that we need to unpack. Let's get right into the first song. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, this is a wake up call I need. What the hell? First guy going absolutely bonkers. Okay, I think we can predict that this guy has some black fluid on his head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. So, okay, right now we have name Max Porcelli, age 36, male human. Max got corrupted, slipped, and cracked his face open, making a gaping hole. And then got up and started stumbling around. He was found standing there, watching Neeser's family through a window before walking off and ignoring them. His presence was enough to warn the whole family about the dangers at their area. Oh, yeah, because in the last version, <laughs> which you played yesterday, because I remember that, uh, Neeser had someone watching them outside. So that's this guy. It's kind of cool that we know that. Later, Corrupted Max encounters Neister's family again and ends up taking two buckshots to the torso and what was left of the face before dying to <laughs> these wounds on the ground. And Neister is back at it. I remember the first version of Corrupt because Neister was killing everyone. He didn't have a slightest hesitation. But right here, he's back with the first beat. Dead as fuck. Still, uh, still, as I said in my last video, they get corrupted too easily. Not that we're gonna get hung up on that, but you know, everyone just gets corrupted. I wanna just see what it is. Here we have some beats we can uh, combine. I like photographs first. Here we need to read all the lore. I like and play the ending. Here I think we can do this after we've done everything. Maybe. Let's go and see. Oh, we can also have eight guys on the screen. Okay, you're doing the Shiki Madness. Okay, I like, appreciate it, Picasso. Mr. Uh, second Beat. Second Beat. <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess. Maybe Corrupted. <laughs> Get a team break on that one. Clicker, just like the last of us. Clicker is one of the cre uh, creations made entirely out of the corrupted fluid without need, without need of a human host. That we saw in the last video as well with the last guy that was like boom, 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 boom. Well stuck to the ground and not aggressive. The moment it sees you in its radius, it will blink and make a loud clicking sound that alerts a huge load of corrupted life of your presence in a radius of 20 miles. That shit gonna be busted. You need, you need a nerf, Mr. Clicker. <laughs> Luckily, the clicker is easy to kill, as proven by how it was sniped by Lilac. But uh, that doesn't really matter, though. Like, still, uh, it's easy to kill. Yeah, but if you've already alerted the other ones in 20 miles, I don't know, that sounds like kind of... Four. I think the damage might have already been done. Their facility workers and staff decided to give the corrupted creatures made purely of the liquid their own names to identify them. They named this one Clicker because of the clicking sound it makes when alerted. Makes sense. All right. I like that. I like that. Bring the clicking because it's broken. This guy's back with a robot dorm. Holy shit. Wait, 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 wait. We have a X16 male and human, and he has got a new arm now. Look at what the tax money can do for the people. When everyone was gearing up, Christian was troubled. He doesn't have an arm, so how can he defend himself? Luckily, Dane thought of that too and installed a robot arm. Oh, Dane was the super doctor, I think. Even if Dane had to cut off the rest of his arm to actually attach the robot one, Dane even gave him a metal pipe to try out this new arm. It felt tingly at first, but after some time, Christian got used to it. He has two arms again, and now he can easily go on a wacky spray. This was basically just an investment for, for, for him to be able to kill him. This guy was like, okay, oh, Dane, thank you for giving me an arm. He, it's, it's a planted seed that's just gonna grow. You think he has done this for your own purpose? No. It's time to go to war, boy. Since there are literally 24 sounds and we can't stick like way too long like I, I, i'm not gonna skip over anything i'm just saying that we aren't gonna just stay like jumpa, jumpa, jumpa all around just because you know it's gonna take an hour and nobody is gonna wanna stay around for that so you know we, we just keep it consistent with these guys all right is this dane oh my god he's gonna go with the gun he's gonna go in with the gun yes yes <laughs> i swear I swear, the doctor looks so innocent last time. Look how mad he is now. He has got a lot of the push puss now. Dane Levian, age 29 male. Oh, <laughs> he's a badass boy. The corrupted fluid situation has toughened him a lot. Even as a new facility, so even as a new facility's new owner, 
uh, now he is colder than before and despite how generous he was uh, when the drop of corrupted liquid touched Christian that's it that's the last time he saved someone from being corrupted and now if he sees the liquid touch someone that someone will be shot to death without hesitation holy shit he takes his leadership of the facility seriously and will do anything he can for human survival but if someone is injured and not corrupted he doesn't mind helping them and giving prosthetics for broken body parts all right this is what we needed this is i well here all right, so basically Dane has just uh, gotten back uh, from being like a fucking pusher to just being a badass looking guy. Can you do a prosthetic like without having a prosthetic? Like, I have two arms, but can I like attach an arm like here and have like three arms? If you like tie in the, with the muscles and nervous system. Does that work? Uh, so let's see. I guess that we're going to have to go with the six beats. Yeah, let's see the fifth beat now. They put this guy in a containment tank. Holy shit, it was loud, what the fuck? Failed test after failed test after failed test. Nothing was working and it's mostly because Corrupted Lie refused to keep still through all the experiment. Is this the guy that they wanted to like try to rescue, I believe? They wanted to try and get him back. Yeah, yeah, they had a strap to a chair. Yeah, I remember because we could play this video yesterday. <laughs> Eventually, the workers began getting fed up with him and no, and found no point in experimenting for a cure in their, if their subject is gonna be like this. Infected, of course you're gonna act like this. What is, <laughs> you're gonna go to a child and be like, well, child, I'm gonna help help you find your way home from the street and the child is like nah, nah, three years old you're gonna be like not nah, fuck you child you go live your own life you know it doesn't really work it doesn't really work yeah 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 uh, if the subject could be like this so they decided to just give up and let him drown in a containment tank full of water staff in hazmat suits picked him up and put him in one and just kept and he just kept banging eventually the banging stopped and he's finally killed off i mean if you can't behave you hit the grave that's what my mother used to say no, <laughs> it rhymed, okay. Okay, I believe this is the last beatdown. Let's see what he has. Hey, now, get your nose off. Get your one, get your one. I do like whatever the fuck it is. If this is supposed to be like a spider upside down, or if this is a mutant type zombie. I don't think that this is uh, appropriate for today's class. Joel Horpen. We tried our best to save him. It isn't his fault this happened. Sorry, Joel. But in, in what way exactly did you try to save him? What the fuck is this? Let's see all the beasts now. Let's see all the beasts now. Three, four, five. Holy shit, that was... A <laughs> I think this is gonna be all the beasts. Oh, the base. So far, I'm not lost. We're not lost. So far, it's just a kind of refreshment. So let's see effect one, what you have. You, you become the lamp. All right, Mr. Lamp Boy. Uh, Chuck Shell went to the facility because he wanted to visit his friend who works there. Chuck found the facility, but eerily, there was nobody at the front preventing him. Having a bad feeling about this, he runs into the, into the facility to check on the friend he wanted to visit and check if he's alright. Chuck is worried sick. The moment he finally found some workers in the facility, he's told to stay exactly where he is. Suddenly, someone corrupted appeared out of nowhere and lunged at him, scaring him off. He gets chased into a closet where there was nowhere left to run. He tried to lock the door, but a corrupted person burst through it. And in the process of snucking a light bulb from the ceiling onto Chuck's head. So Chuck gets both corrupted and has a broken light bulb causes constant electrocuting his head. Later on, Dane encounters him and shoots him in the head. Right in front of the man Chuck was originally best friends with. Oh, that's kind of sad, honestly. That's kind of yay. We're moving on now. We're moving on to effect two. Oh, Galoid is back! What? Why do I clap? It's always gets so fucking loud in the end of things yet. Alright. I swear, Okelo looks a bit more angry now. Remember what I said last video? I predicted that the Ocaloid is kind of a madman. Yeah. After meeting the humans and understanding their situation, King Ecola has agreed to help fight with the humans and even bring some Ocaloids to help too. It may not be an easy mission, but meeting humans like this is rare for a regular Ocaloid, so helping out a human will feel like an accomplishment. So he grabbed his staff and asked for Ocaloid volunteers. Soon enough, a good handful of Ocaloids, including Tarsh and Oskil, to help the humans with this corrupted fluid issue. All right. <gasps> They're gonna help the humans. Oh, sweet baby. Jeez. Also, his daughter, Lena, wanted to come too. Ecola said yes, but being concerned for her safety, he said she isn't allowed to fight with him, only to watch. So the Oculus are actually gonna try and like help humans with the corrupted shit. I thought the Oculus was like, you know, but oh, we're gonna help you, yeah, of course, and then it's gonna be like, when it, like but so yeah, that, that's a good sign, that's a good sign. Uh, I think we do want the Oculus on our hands, because the Oculus seems to be a little bit overpowered. I don't really know what to do, but they look fucking cool, so I mean, yeah, let's keep that, and let's hope Lena doesn't die, you know, the daughter is still a daughter.
Ja. Nästa! Bro, what the fuck? You are going psycho, Bobby. Oh, this is sick. Also, this are, thank you for uh, you being this clear in this mod because I can use you as my thumbnail. <laughs> Basically, after seeing Max out the window, Nisa knew exactly what was gonna happen. Just from that encounter, he knows the house isn't as safe. So he gives a few things to his family that could be used as weapon, at least, and says, at least, and says this place isn't safe. Lilac and the kids go with what he's doing. Nista decides to have him and his family go on a search for somewhere safer while armed with what they currently have. Eventually, they find an abandoned gun store with the store clerk dead on the floor. Since it's abandoned, Nisa and his family are able to collect whatever is in it while being on the lookout for anyone corrupted. They take what they can and find most useful. Nila grabs a katana. Lilac grabs a sniper, Lister grabs a pistol, and Nilac grabs a metal bat. Uh, Nisa just grabs what he has, what he's more used to, a shotgun. This time being a spas 12, but he can work with it. Uh, they, they then head out now that they have more defense and find the exact facility Nisa was in before under a complete war with the infected. Nisa himself was reluctant to join them at first, but since Patrick's dead, he figured why not. All right, th that was just basically what was gonna have to happen. Nisa was going to have to go rampage mode because we've seen him go rampage mode in the first one. Of course, they got a rampage mode. Nisa, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not nothing about it. Basically, they had to go into the lab and kind of fight this once and for all. But holy shit. Yes, this sound perfectly fit the description of like, yeah, we're going to go to war and we're gonna win. Oh, the, uh, I have a... I have an untreated, so to say, fear of sirens, of nuclear, like, uh, fallouts, I said, or like wars. I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this. Name, model F88. Age built two weeks ago. Gender. Nah. Just a siren that set off at the facility whenever there's a breach or an intrusion. We know there's a fucking breach. Okay, we know this shit's gonna go down. Nowadays, the facility's main building is used as hideout. And this siren is used when a corrupted victim is found stumbling inside. That's better. Because if you remember the corrupt too, there was this fucking girl that had this little bell and be like, ding, ding, ding. Oh, corrupted are coming. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, you're sleeping. Oh, shit. No, this is what you need. A fucking. I respect that. Kudos to you. Kudos to you. Oh yeah. Is this the daughter? Oh, that's incredible. Oh. Okay, so Oscar, Oscar, age 34, uh, male, Ocaloid. Is this a new one? I don't know. One of the Ocaloids that wanted to help the humans with their problems. He found how easily a corrupted being can be killed and thought this mission would be easy uh, and he didn't have to worry. He was calm and lay back while finding them until a tall and fast corrupted monster snatched him, corrupting him and ripping off a horn. I think maybe that is, you know, the boom boom. Corrupted Ocaloids are real, uh, are a real first, but that doesn't mean anyone hesitated to take care of Oscar. He was later bashed to death by Christian. This guy found out how easy they are to kill. Oh no, and then he died. So we saw the, the cliche and all that. Oh shit. Tell me, where does the secret treasure lay and all that, you know, when they're just dying? And this guy is like, no, I'm dead. So now they don't know how easy they are to kill. Creepy fucking sound, though, I must say. Let's see the last effect. I lower the volume because I get scared really easily from these sounds. I don't know what it is. This is like some fucking. This is like a nervous chaser, like. Parasite. Uh, made four days ago, uh, not a gender corrupted creature. This one was challenging to kill. It's fast, twitchy, and aggressive. It's always trying to attack someone. Nobody could ever hit it. Later, this thing was found having a fellow worker, Joel, wrapped around in the corrupted liquid and hung up from the ceiling, trying to devour him whole. For the most part, it was succeeding, leaving everything below Joel's neck nothing but gooey corrupted mush that's hanging from the ceiling. It was distracted with its feast, so the workers were able to quickly gun it down before it causes any further damage. It's already done enough to Joel. So Joel was this guy. You know, that guy hanging with the, with, with the fuck with man. Yeah. This is... Okay, so the, the, the parasite. That's why it looks like a caterpillar. Because entire body just kind of get like snatched up. You know, and like snake skin sucking up like a big ball of cock. So this little fucker can do this amount of damage. That's kind of scary, honestly. But we're going to go into melodies now. Because this recording is almost half an hour in. So this is going to be a long video. Here we have the daughter. Daughter girl. It's going to do what? Still that kind of swimsuit, bottle like neck, build, apple up, sup. Lana. 
19 female alkaloid. Lena wanted to fight with the humans too, but being concerned for her safety, her father, King Ecola, didn't let her join the war. However, he did allow her to go into the human world just in safe places and behind everyone who's battling the, the corrupted. While she did grow interest in a few humans, uh, sometimes watching them uh, when nobody's looking, she unfortunately still is not able to understand them. She wishes to. But she'd have to go to Seventeen, who is back at the Oculoid dimension. Yeah, Seventeen wants to get a new, like, every language. Uh, Spanish and, like, English. It's gonna end in a disaster for her, I think. But, I mean, she, is, she isn't dead, so maybe she survived, but, yeah. Now we have the dog, I believe. He gets headphones now! Okay, this is a way much better melody than we had last time. The last one was kind of fucked, but this one... It's a show, uh, baby. Baby. I am my first love. No matter what it takes, compare to my baby. No matter come between me and ever come apart. Okay, Spork, Aishu, non, set the puppy. Not dead. Hell yeah, Spork, you go. But where the fuck is Tim? While the Oculus went out to help the humans, Spark went with Tarsh on his way there, and Tarsh gave him these earmuffs, earmuffs to drown out the loud gunfire. Oh, that's cute. They work, and Spark is able to just shield behind Tarsh as Tarsh fights the corrupted. Also, the reason this works is because set the puppets like Spark have tiny little ears beneath the layer of their skin on each side, hearing everything through the skin protecting them. These earmuffs are able to be a big help for Spark, as he's sensitive to sounds that are too loud, such as gunfire and shouting. Oh, and also set the puppets aren't affected by the corrupted liquid, but Spark is told not to splash around in it. <laughs> this is a real pain to clean up. Oh, this kid is cute. You just give him like, he's like giving a little kid an iPad. Like, hey, take this iPad. I'm just gonna go to war. First off, I thought Spark was suspicious, but then I realized Spark is the man we all need to love. Look! Look! Uh, he's back! Oh, yeah, look. <laughs> oh fuck, okay, so, while searching for resources, Dane and a few other workers find this abandoned train slightly covered in the corrupted liquid. <laughs> train? Hmm, I wonder what reference this is gonna be. Well, reluctant, they check out the train for any loot and anything useful. They find Locke, who is corrupted, and ends up binding and corrupting a worker. Oh fuck, that's not good. Dane and the others immediately open fire on Locke, and the worker, he bit off. Uh, he bit. They soon left uh, left the train because there was nothing, and they didn't want to risk another worker. Got a cool reference, got a cool reference. This is the Count Dracula, mister. Has a little spear now, okay. Not somebody but wanna fuck with you. Yeah. Not somebody but wanna suck with you. Torch agrees to help uh, the humans with the other Oculoids fighting and runs out of the portal with the spear. Prepare to go wild while Spark is on top of his head. <gasps> also giving Spark a pair of earmuffs. Yes. <laughs> he's on his head now. That's crazy. After a moment, he sets Spark down and has to follow behind to avoid getting hurt. Spark does follow him. Uh, a few times, and other times he at least sits somewhere in the background where Tarsh is able to see him. <laughs> oh, Spork is a king! <laughs> he has sits around like... Yep. Luckily in the most grey... Like, luckily, in this most grey and neutral colored environment, he can spot Spark who is bright orange very easily. While everyone else uh, uses ranged weapons against the corrupted, even King Ecola firing a laser beam from his staff, uh, Torch commonly just runs uh, in with his spear and stabs his corrupted enemies in the head, being careful not to get any of the liquid on himself. So, uh, luckily, uh, Torch has armor and metal mask for protection. Yeah, what I say, like, still kind of a dangerous move. Your arms are still kind of exposed. I wouldn't run in with the spear when you have guns. Hero. Hero. Oh. What the fuck is this kind of stuff? Oh, look at Alec! <laughs> of course, you still gonna have the guitar. You got all. Oh. While Nisa was gone, Lilac was anxious. Uh, she didn't know how or why she he had suddenly left like that. Nilak, of Nilak offered to go out uh, to look for him, but concerned for Nilak's safety, Lilac told them not to, as she doesn't want him to go missing like Nisa did. Luckily, Nisa came back, but that was cut short after they were made aware that he had to go. After Lilac and the rest got the weapons from that abandoned store, the family traveled in a small little line with Nisa being in front, the kids being in the middle, and Lilac being behind them, as she uses a sniper to pick up potential threats ahead. No bro, use the guitar! Just like Nisa, Lilac has tried so hard to keep the family safe, as there were a few close calls with Nilak. For the most part of the for the most part, the family survived the whole way through. Uh, but let's see now. Uh, the last effect, uh, the holy shit. Yeah, we got it. <gasps> Timmy! Oh no, Timmy, you do not look that good, bro. Oh no, Timmy. How someone laid your hands on you, Timmy? Who laid your hands on you? Why do you have? Oh, you're corrupted. No. no. <laughs> 
Oh, video's over. Video's over. It, it's no need. It's no need. Look at him. He was so innocent. He had a bright future ahead of him. He just had this little playing bug. And he was like, where is my family? I don't know. Knees are saved. And now is he dead? What the fuck? Timmy Gertel, age 12, male. It's inside of his body now. Timmy was found by a worker being surrounded by puddles of corrupted liquid. The worker tries to help him by clearing out some puddles and helping him step in the right places without getting corrupted. It worked so well and it was almost to safety. Until Timmy accidentally tripped and landed his side onto a puddle of the liquid. And with your face in the puddle. Don't die, Emmy. I was rude for you this entire time for all these three versions, and now you're dead, bro. Seeing this makes the worker shed a tear. He knows what must be done, but he doesn't have the strength to kill a kid, even if he's corrupted. Timmy got up and began twitching. The worker closed his eyes and looked away, aiming the gun at the child. Boom, boom, boom. After finding mercy, killing the kid. The worker requested his name never be mentioned in these documents under pure guilt of having to kill a child. A moment of silence for the one we lost today. We lost him. <sighs> Why couldn't you just stay with us? I wanted you to stay with me. Stay with me. Cause you're all I need. You were my favorite character of all of these. It's sad to see you go, Timmy. It was like a little brother to me. All right, let's do all the best together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is all I want to hear. Really it's like the sound that I never had. More of the voices. Let's see what we have. I'm going to let this guy. Wait, wait, wait. TFO. I don't know. I can't hear what you're saying, bro. But I, rem I remember you. I remember you. A few weeks after me corrupted, Matthew Gretz broke out of the cell that his consciousness asked to be locked in. He roams around and acts aggressive while loudly shouting these weird noises. Nisa's family encounter encounters him, and Nisa was gonna blow his brains out, but Nilak wanted to kill too. So Nilak pulled out the katana to get from the weapons and chopped his head off. Bro! Nisa was so proud. No, bro, Nisa, you're wildly now. You're wildly now. You gotta, you gotta control your You can't have your kids run around and psh, slice everyone off, bro. You don't wanna use from a thumbnail. You gotta step up, bro. You gotta kill people. Uh, second boys is is what is this girl which i don't really recognize uh, well, i recognize but i don't really remember looks hella dead though i don't know how you're still in the game corrupted of course that's what we can say Saler Ravenstein, Ravenstein. is the one of human human dead being locked in a containment cell for so long not only prevents aggressive problems, but also prevents any interruption for the corrupted fluid to dissolve her faster, starting from where she touched by the fluid and, uh, and its way all over. Later, she finally dies after half of her brain is consumed by the liquid. Holy shit. And she collapses right there in the middle of her containment cell. I really don't remember, but I remember cell Like, it's, it's something I remember, but I don't remember really what she did. It, it's no point in me sitting here trying to analyze something I don't really remember. So let's, let's move on, you know? <laughs> What is this guy? Luke Luke. A17 male human. Uh, not dead, so this is a cheeky little lad. Oh, hey, it's me. I uh, guess I didn't need Nister for my own backstory. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I saw on the news uh, about the corrupted outbreak and uh, stuck up, arming myself with an Uzi I was originally just gonna use for home defense until I fell down the stairs and fractured my jaw. Oof. I was left there screaming and crying in pain. Luckily, a man named Dane Livian rushed to help me and gave me this prosthetic jaw device. Man, Dane is really carrying this shit. He goes out just kind of building Legos on these people that fucking miss stuff. That's good. Good job, Dane. It's detachable uh, in case I need to eat or drink something, and it helps me speak more fluently than, well, when I had the job writer. Even has a cool voice filter to it. Are you, have you, have we seen you before? We maybe have seen you in the first version, I don't know. But yeah, you just have an Uzi, your hair broke, break, breaking jaws, uh, uh, and now you just have a cool voice filter. I mean, I, I can't really say anything as to that. Hey, uh, smash or something, I don't know. <laughs> let's move on. Let's, uh, let's uh, have this guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is oh, this is disgusting. This is creepy. This guy does look corrupted, though. This goes like he has been through some maniac uh, episodes or something. Jeffrey was a worker at the facility, even staying with the facility's community, even through the corrupted outbreak. That kind of changed when he witnesses a best friend get corrupted and shot. This scared him a lot, and he started screaming. People looked at him in concern. Jeffrey was later put in a straitjacket and kept away since he kept shaking, heavily breathing and screaming. Workers began getting distracted by his screaming, so tape was also put in his mouth. Not like he really speaks, it's mostly just screaming. 
But most of it is muffling, excuse me. In fact, the only coherent word we can utter is shock. Uh, have we seen Chuck? Let's see. Oh, it was this guy. So, he, oh yeah, because right, this guy gets killed right in front of the man Chuck was already the best friend with. And there is the origin story of basically the fuck this guy. So he got, he got fucked. Yeah, that was kind of sad, honestly. Honestly, kind of sad. He got, he, he saw his friend got shot the fuck. And then he just got paid. But he's dead. I mean, he, he can maybe recover. Uh, doesn't look that he says he's ready to recover anytime soon. But yeah, fifth voice now. <gasps> is this lad? This guy was fucking epic. But then, oh, what the fuck is this guy gonna be then? Tall man, Mr. The Tall Man is now his description. Age non, uh, age, but, uh, yeah, a gender non corrupted humanoid. So, even if it isn't the only uh, being made purely out of the corrupted juice anymore, it's still deadly. And hella creepy, this way is the creepiest one of them all. It runs like hell, and this. It runs like hell, and despite being deaf, the moment it sees you, it can catch you on memory of where you were last. It's like an until dawn, they don't hear you. No, they don't see you, but they hear you, and they kind of just jump really fucking fast to your position if you play them until dawn. Great game, great fucking game. Luckily, this thing was distracted with Oskol, so people uh, took the chance to open fire on it. King Echo managed to make short work of this thing by shooting a beam at it with the staff. This tall freak may be dead, but that doesn't mean everyone's safe. Now they have an entirely different beast with nearly the same height. It's good that you shot him. Now everyone was not safe, but yeah, this guy was horrified. I thought this guy was gonna be the boss battle, but I guess that's gonna be this next guy then. Holy shit, boys, this is the last poll of the Crumpbox series. Are you ready? Uh, 52 minutes recording. This has been a ride. Let's see what this is. Not as scary as I thought, but what the fuck is this? Holy shit. This is some sort of mutated mega monster of the corruption. -ness. Oh, I think this is the new beast. Okay, yeah, I, I wish this guy looked scary because he looks kind of friendly. But okay, let's pretend that it's actually super scary. Oof. Juggernaut, age six weeks ago. Gender non corrupted monster, monster, monster. Nobody knew. Oh, nobody knows where this thing came from, but it's somehow worse than Tall Man. Not only can I hear and see very clearly, it is also incredibly resistant. Bullets and shotgun shells do not face it, and it's hard to overwhelm. It just came in and began wrecking havoc. It's just effortless, uh, throwing around workers, corrupts them, and some didn't even get corrupted. They just died. Died, died, died. This thing is just a whole riot on its own, and it doesn't help that the survivors keep mostly being keep occupied with hordes of the corrupted humans. It's really incredible how things can get out of hand that quickly. One worker had a plan to fill a building with explosive and lead this thing into it. But that is the same worker who was deemed many times as the slee same worker in this facility. Everybody is unsurprisingly reluctant to the idea, but there is no better option. They just said, screw it, why not? It's an only hope anyway. All right, so this beast just came in and they can't like do anything of it. It fucks everyone around and fucks everyone around once again. And the way that they're gonna fight it is a little bit of an explosion. Now we're gonna see uh, where the uh, where these pages are gonna come. So the uh, first one is just a bit of a 22. Okay, so now we have photographs of logs. Okay. This is sick, this is sick, this is sick. Okay, so photo guys, click a photo to show its description. <gasps> okay, so here we have uh, Peter Thiel. Oh, this is sick, oh my god, this is sick, okay. <gasps> Holy shit, so, uh, but, but, is it Peter? I, I, I guess so. Well, Patrick's still alive, he kept telling at the workers not to enter one specific room, which was closed with a metal blast door. Now that he's gone, Dane and Christian began getting a bit curious on why Patrick Average was so insistent on keeping this room for everyone. They think based on Patrick's actions while he was alive, whether he's keeping in here can't be in the worst thing, right? So they open up and investigate. The room smell awful and Dane had to get uh, go get a flashlight just uh, see in there. They find his uh, they find this decayed lifeless skeleton sitting in the room. They find the skeleton also has a wallet. So Dane and Christian check the ID that's in the wallet. Turns out it's Peter Thiel, a worker that has gone missing for a long time. Dane checked his pulse. He's gone. You had a long and painful death. Man, Peter still got the worst out of everyone. Like, low kid. Kid, you know the story. Kid got fucking put into the... Like, shot dead. Wife in prison dead. And then he's just laid to his fucking rest in the corpses and rotten flesh in this kind of room. That's fucked. But at least we got closure. At least everyone got closure. His family was died before, so they, they he, he was the last standing. But, you know, they can't get closure. But we can get closure. Still fucking pissed off that Timmy died, but okay. Uh, autograph 2. Oh no, no, this is fucked, bro. Shaq and Jeffrey were the two best buds. This is the last selfie they took before everything went downhill. 
<laughs> Look at how happy oh, yeah. <laughs> And a little palm tree on the beach behind them Jeffrey had to learn the hard way That maybe being a facility worker isn't as good as it sounds The time Chuck's friend checked on him uh, Chuck was attacked and killed Leaving Jeffrey at the permanent mental damage state no, I don't like, like, it's a good, like, now we just sound cheesy, but you know, it feels like we have some sort of a personal connection to them. It feels so cheesy to say that. But yeah, it's a, it's a good written story that you have, like, the progression. Lore modes, I think, should have, like, at least two versions. Three could be cool. Because then you can see, like, progression in characters. Maybe this was just in the last version, but I don't know. Uh, if you play this, like, back to back to back, uh, I think that it will be a lot more fresher. That's that. Uh, that's kind of sad. Let's see what happened to this guy. Uh, six years before the corrupted fluid even existed, Patrick was arrested once. Of course, the guy that was uh, his right-hand man at the time, Anthony, bailed him out. This was Patrick's mic shot in the past. This is some lore that I think you can kind of puzzle together. I don't really get anything going with this. Maybe this is something like, oh, he was a dirty pig before. Like, what did he get arrested of and something like that? Let's see the last picture. Hey, this isn't so bad. These guys are actually easy to kill. Oscar last words. Yeah, that's what I told you. I, I, I bet that it was this guy that was gonna come after him. But yeah, it's a shame that Oscar died because Oscar knew how to kill th those lads. So now uh, we're gonna see these guys. Three, four, five, six. Seven. Ending unlocked. Ending unlocked. We have ending unlocked. I want to say, because this can be like ending uh, thing. Wouldn't it be fucking sick if you could make a scratch in Credit Box mode where you kind of have to choose your path? Like, oh, do you want to kill this guy or this guy? And then uh, you kind of uh, alternate the story based on, like, I like Until Dawn, for example. And then you get, like, a special ending. You can have, like, 20 different endings. It would be a pain in that for me, but that would be, like, the most hype shit that I would ever play in Scratch. Yeah, yeah, yes, you know, that would be sick. If someone uh, does that, I'm gonna print out a picture, uh, an image of your uh, profile and hang it right uh, beside here so you will always get the love that you deserve. <laughs> okay, after finishing off the remaining horse of corrupted victims that were occupying them, the workers decided to try out the building explosion idea for Juggernaut, the big master, who at least by the looks of it is the last remaining threat from, uh, from the corrupted liquid. They sent Christian to scout out for the building and in under four minutes Christian finds a shack. So the workers carry barrels of flammable gasoline as well as propane tanks, oil cans, and dynamite. Don't ask why they had dynamite. They th <laughs> what the fuck happened there? They throw one end of a rope in the shack and hold up the other 50 meters away from it. As Dane shoots at Juggernaut to get his attention, he does and it runs after him. So Dane quickly runs to the shack of explosives, waits until the beast is right behind him, and turns around to run out and look, lock, the, uh, lock the door. After Dane runs out to the others, he grabs a lighter and watches the rope turn into a trail of fire leading towards the shack of explosives that Juggernaut is trapped in. Okay, oh yeah, I fucked it up, but yeah. A trail of fire leading towards the shack of explosives that Juggernaut is trapped. A big loud explosion happens as the large corrupted monster is finally dead. With the biggest threat, from the corrupted fluid gone, they, ta uh, they take out any remaining. Wait! A big loud explosion happens as the large corrupted monster is finally dead. Sick bro. With the biggest threat from the corrupted fluid gone, they take out any remaining corrupted beings and re uh, relieve themselves from all distress. For celebration, they decide to take Patrick's corpse from the attic, which nobody knows why they just kept it, and tied it to a wooden pole with a rope attached. Dane decides to toss the lighter to Nisa, who has already not killed Patrick, and let him light up the course to truly end this all. Yo! Take a snooze on that one. And so it's the end of Corrupt Box. To watch the body burn to pieces.